Church. And we are here broadcasting to everyone of our church in Brazil and outside of the country. And I want, would like to inform the brethren as well that our broadcast is being done from here, from uh, the Manaim of Domingos Martins, in the region of Domingos Martins in Marcelo Floriano. And we have just finished this morning a seminar here on the Manaim with the presence of more than 3,000 people here in the lo this local this location. And we have just finished this period called the third period of the seminar. And now we are waiting with a few brethren, brethren that, uh, that are going to stay with us uh, for our next seminar. It's going to start t tonight, Sunday. And we are going to begin another seminar that is going to last uh, the whole day tomorrow and on Tuesday in the seventh period of the seminar where we are waiting for uh, another group of more than 3,000 people to be in this seminar besides all the people there are going to be connected with us by a satellite on the other mountains all over the, the country and also in places uh, around the world and I would like to inform the brethren with great joy that in this seminar we are sharing with you the presence of a, br a few brethren that came from outside of the country, brethren that came from different nations and languages. We have here eight different nationalities and languages participating here with us, pastors, brethren from church uh, of outside of uh, Brazil. They are participating here with us in this Sunday school. We're going to now broadcast or give continuity to our study that we are uh, as we have been answering the word of uh, the revelation of the lord to uh, inform our church uh, about the revelations that we have in revelations so before we begin uh, the study about revelations so the brethren can work in, in their churches through the, the class dynamics we have we're going to have an introductory word and for this we're going to hand the word for pastor Gerald T my brethren and peace of the Lord our topic that we we have been speaking about on the Sunday school is about the book of revelations last year from January we began the study of the book of revelations and we are still um, now on the third letter of the book of Revelations, uh, chapter 2 of Revelations, when it speaks about the seven letters that have been directed at that time, at that period, to the churches of Asia. Asia. And for us, the aspect of the church of Asia, they are prophetic, and we have been showing this. For example, the first letter was to, for the church of Ephesus and we we're going to observe that at that period was a period in which the doctrine was established by revelation and Paul said the following because I received from the Lord what I also taught you and he said in a different way I haven't received this from any man but of what the Holy Spirit has told me so the word that the the word that the world needed which was the word of the gospel was established in the first period of the church which was um, correlated to, correlated to the letter of the church of ephesus so the opposition that rose up in that period was an opposition against the word because why because existed a teaching on the old testament I spoke about the revelation the, the the scriptures there were the pagans that in every service including something that make it much easier because it was helped by the philosophy of that period called the Hellenistic where there were or the Epicureus the Stoicos and many philosophical groups that introduced also into the life of the church so what what actually happened in truth was that the world when we speak world we have to say the flesh and the enemy of all souls they rose up to oppose to the word 
And what word? What's the revealed word? It was not the teaching of religion. The religious teaching they wanted to keep, they wanted to maintain. And at that time, there was a church that was dictated by the Holy Spirit from the period of the Pentecost. It was a doctrine, it was a different message, because the church had to be established from that period, and the church would be the responsible for that word, for that doctrine. And a question that we ask, and I'm asking to all of my, my brethren that are listening to me, is the following. The opposition to the word continued. Yes, it continued. It was hidden. The word was uh, translated into Latin. It was vulgarized. And then when Luther comes, and points out the four basic elements of the religious reformation, which was the doctrine that had been abandoned by the called Christianity. And today, in the applic practical application, what is the opposition? The position of the world, of the enemy, of the flesh is against the revealed doctrine. The word, the, real, the revealed word, because the revealed word is what is bringing Christianity, the faithful Christianity and the faithful church back to their path. Because now the church that will depart has to have the revelation because the period is of revelation. Because Jesus wants to reveal himself to the church and wants the church to be revealed to him. And who does this? And who does this operation? It's the Holy Spirit. Is the same that was poured out during Pentecost and that is now being poured out in our days. It was the first time it was for the church to be established in the world. And now the church will come back. So there is another pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And this happened to all of those that have been, been having experience of, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And not only this, the results say that the revealed word and the spiritual gifts, all of it, we are fighting and living as a body. We are understanding what is a body. And we understand that it's not the flesh that's going to be raptured, it's the body. So the first period is the Church of Ephesus. And the second period was the Church of Smyrna. The struggle, the opposition of the enemy was against the body. It was against Jesus. First it was against the Father. And, and now it's against the Son. The church of Smyrna. We're going to kill the church in order for it not to uh, uh, deliver the message. There is no other way to communicate other than the oral way. So then, if you kill the church, the church pays with their own lives, with their own body. The body pays exactly because of the doctrine that was given in Ephesus. So, so the church dies in order to live. So that, that was the way in way it expanded the gospel at that time. Because when the Christians went to the crosses, to the fire pits, and to the arenas, so in, instead of the communication being between one to another verbal, they went to the middle of the stadiums, and the people was shouting. But they saw the people that were on the crosses, it was the, te the, wit the testimony, they went to the fire pits, the, went, the ones that went to the mouth of the lions. It was one person giving a, test, a witness. What the enemy thought was going to kill, he was not killing. He was giving the opportunity for the church to give that testimony to, to the world at the time. Because at that time, the, there were arenas, the great amphitheaters. And there they were giving a testimony. It was the moment of the testimony. I read what seemed by the enemy something bad but for God the project was complete so then the third which is the third church what, what we are going to see in a few minutes is a church of Pergamon the word Pergamon is related to per which is a pre, uh, prefix a Greek prefix which speaks of perversion per Gamos, uh, marriage, so perverted marriage. So then the enemy fought in the first phase of the church, 
was not able to stop. Then he fought against the sun. He was not able to overcome, and now is fighting against the Holy Spirit. He speaks about the faith. You have seen uh, the, in these days what faith is this? It's the same Holy Spirit. So it, it fights against this. The world do not want the wor work of the Holy Spirit. So if they fought against the Word, uh, against the Son, uh, against the Father, the doctrine, against the Son, the body, and against the Holy Spirit, which was the great struggle that they had. And then soon after, the woman, symbol of the unfaithful church, takes the leaven and place on the three measures of uh, weed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So she destroyed what the enemy came to destroy, everything. So from that point, the church takes a direction called Christianity. It was completely different. The church, Christianity went to a completely different uh, room. And it, it was no longer spiritual. It now became material, which was intrinsic of the seed and it became something exterior. Exterior, so the faith was exteriorized to the world. This faith that does not lead to eternity. So from that, from that point, the brethren can now understand a little bit. So, before I hand the word back to Pastor Jusson, I want to speak about the questions of today. I want to speak a little bit of Revelations. Today, everybody is, is interested in Revelation. The Americans made a bunch of movies about Revelations that everything was going to come to an end, the world finishing. Nobody got converted. Nobody got converted. They uh, were afraid. They were shaking. There are people that don't even want to hear about Revelations. But they don't know. In fact, the secret is in the book of Revelations for the faithful church. The world who get used to these things is the vulgarization of this. The vulgarization of the word. Everybody has a Bible. Everybody has a Bible. Uh, the are Brazilian, famous Brazilian singers have a Bible. Anyone has a Bible. I'm not criticizing that young woman. She may even be a Christian today. But I'm speaking about things like that. Much on the contrary. She may be in, in better spiritual shape than other people that think that they are so good. But now you see the vulgarization. You see all the sub -purpose. They're coming out with names of uh, revelations. Uh, there's so much foolishness. Think that we cannot even understand. And the bad Christian that doesn't come to the church, he stays home watching soap operas. And then tomorrow, this, he doesn't have the, uh, anything to get ready for revelation. Now it's not revelation, it's now rapture, my brethren. What is that? A people that don't doesn't have revelation. The word says revelation of Jesus. It was given by God about Jesus. Revelation. Who doesn't have revelation does not enter into the book of Revelations about the things that are about to happen. They don't know about the time called near. They think that time called near is is about tomorrow. They don't understand that the period is that involved the church of the last days. They don't understand this, so there are a series of things. They want to understand revelations in reason, and in reason they lose the blessing because they receive the condemnation. Who wants to research the book of Revelations? Who removes a, a, one thing of the prophecy of the book? If you change the prophetic of the book, you will receive a condemnation. That's what, what we're saying to the church and the pastors to pray, to seek the Lord, pleading so that you don't say foolishness. Because if you say foolishness, you may be called upon. Because you, you lead the church to a place where the church was not called for. You place in your head the craziness that you have without revelations. So see, my brethren, our great, greatest concern is exactly this. When we speak revelation of the book, it's a prophecy. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's a, not letter in, in your own reason. You have to enter into the book. And the revelation, people start talking about it because it's a sequence one, two, three, four, five. That's not how it works. Revelation, uh, it jumps to a point to another and then go goes back, and that's why we are showing why revelation, why this. Why prophetic? Why the blood? Why the word? 
this is all uh, here to prepare for understanding. And we see here the soap operas out there. And there's a, a religious group that have a, a TV channel in Brazil. They are saying that first trumpet has been sounded in the, in the 70s. They went to find uh, uh, evidence on history. Nothing to do with this because the the spirit is uh, reveals the what, what the trumpets are going to be uh, to happen. They don't understand the revelation. They don't. They are not able to reach revelation. So then the beast had seven heads and horns, and then everybody is, goes gets all uh, nervous and afraid. They are afraid of uh, going to hell and finding the beast with seven heads. They, they never saw. And the life they never see is on all on his head that people had. We need to speak of a people that understand what, what revelation is, uh, that know where they're going. We don't have any other object other than this. The people that go are those that are prepared for eternity. See my brethren, the book of Revelation. I was going to speak a little bit, but I know because we don't have a lot of time. Only the question. I'll leave you for, for the end, which is the most important thing. <laughs> now we're going to speak about revelations. My brethren, let's remove this idea of of uh, thinking uh, with a little mind about an uh, extraordinary book that only speaks. When you read, you have you are blessed. You will receive a blessing. The church began began to get awoken. The church is not more awoken because the leaders don't allow it. They try to hold the church back. They have their own message that is worthless for the moment. There is no sequence. A little bit today, a little bit tomorrow. It's the same thing. You are collecting coins in the middle of the garbage. You will never find. Oh, I found this. Oh, I found that. Nobody lives off of this. You're not going to live of, of a coin that you found here, another found there. This doesn't exist. You have to, you have to have a bank account. The, the the money falls on your bank account every day, and then you need to know. This is this comes from the original in Greek. Revelations. The word is is to find out. Revelation. Take some time. Reveal and hide away it's a metaphoric way so in all the words revelation speaks to bring to light so what is in the book was hidden away but now you bring it into light because of revelations things that become unknown because of the effect for example today we have knowledge of the degradation of the oceans of the forest of the rivers we see the situation in the world with uh, volcanoes, earthquakes. And those are the signs that the revelation speaks of this, of these events. People don't know. When you see the prophets of Jesus about the sun, the moon, and the stars, you don't understand why. But here it is, it's in the book of Revelations. Everything is in the book of Revelations. The living and dead things. What the religious uses, what is dead, because he says what, whatever they want. They say all the foolish, foolishness that they want, because they speak about dead. But when they speak about the, the living, they need to have a revelation. Otherwise, they were going to choke on the book. They're going to think that Church of Ephesus was for that time. The Holy Spirit is the same. That said for that time is speaking to the church today. The example from there is the same form here. The same reaction of the world and the enemy, the revealed world is the same. Let us continue. The book of Revelations has a prefix, which is APO, which is uh, or the origin. Uh, ever since the origin. Those are our mysteries. It says, being revealed in a general way. So then you speak about everything. 
It has a sequence. It's not a logical sequence. It's a sequence of the revelation. It's specific of the revelation. It's the mystery of the revelation. And here, to be revealed is, for example, Peter 5.1. Peter five, first Peter five one. The elders who are amongst you, I exhort, I, I whom am a fellow elder and witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Revealed here is the same as the APO. Revelation is to be revealed. It's in the book of Revelations. We don't bring topics. There are we only bring topics that are in the original, referring to Christ coming from heaven. So this is another reference of the APO because it's referring to Sima Brethren, the New Testament. In the original is the Book of Revelation is referring to the things to Christ coming from heaven. It's referring now to the things that are revealed. The Christ coming from heaven and manifested through the Holy Spirit. Those are things that are revealed. Jesus at the doors, the parable of the the virgins, the wise and the foolish virgins. It's all here. Reference to the people, to the apparition of Christ and the clouds. And Luke seventeen thirty. You don't even have to read it. Keep the text and read later at home. So he's referring to the Antichrist. Why is that? It's interesting. There are many reference, reference to APO, to everything that is here. But now he plays, he puts Antichrist here because it goes against everything that is in the book. He wants to say the opposition of what happened in Ephesus and it doesn't is not finished. The period of the church has not finished. The story of the church continues. We're living its last days, the last moments of the church, the last church. So, going back once again. So, let us see Calypto for Apocalypse. Calypto is a suffix which is what is hidden away only by revelation. It's the origin, only entering the book by revelation. Who doesn't revelation? Who doesn't believe in revelation? Doesn't enter into the book. If you and if you enter, it's going to be bad for you. The world there's nothing wrong with with the world, but the man that knows revelation and wants to enter into the flesh is going to see the results of this. And we are warning our pastors so that they don't say any foolish, foolishness. So you need to have revelations. The the effects of Calypto. Romans 1 17 is from faith to faith. You cannot understand the book like this. This is, then you jump to the other place. No, that's not how it goes. It's by faith and faith by faith. And then more and more than God reveals. One thing completes the other. One phrase does never uh, contradict the other. Not at all. When you speak of woman here, we speak of the unfaithful church. You may be speaking about Israel. You may even use, but a woman there is the unfaithful church, and you continue unfaithful church. When the woman picks up the leaven and puts in three measures of uh, wheat, is the unfaithful church. She leavened the whole dough. What was interior, which was the seed, became something that was ex external. Uh, the dough entered into the government of the world. This structure that is out there, which is the structure the creative work which is about faith to everyone but does not lead to eternity and the church entering into this boat this is our struggle in this world and to tell the brethren bring a church for the moment in which we are living so we are brethren we are friends we are, our church should not be um, uninformed uh, maybe 20 30 it does doesn't matter how many people but we need to understand what the, the relation to the Lord are so now the church reveals what light is is removing the veil everything was was dark so then you turn the light on 
then you see you have revelation and what is the light right the light is is jesus the action of the verb uh, of the word is, is his spirit is the holy spirit is jesus naturally so removed uh, ignorance and shows the mysteries those are the divine doctrines there are in the book what else do you want the ones that watch in Sunday school, you, you left home, you left your chicken, left, uh, you, you didn't, uh, you're on, on the market and you're forgetting this. What kind of Christian are you? You're not interested about this? You're not interested. You're interested on, on the letter? You don't need to be here in the church. You go someplace else. We're not playing about religion we don't need people I'm I'm here I never needed people I'm 86 years old I'm closer to dying than uh, most people but I'm but I'm telling you one thing you're gonna go before I go <laughs> the meaning of the the uh, um, appearance of Christ Jesus is revealing is the appearance of Jesus is a sacrifice is the result of the project of God which is Jesus look here what is this it stopped it's over look here so what is the effect that it transmit only by revelation but faith by faith the meaning of the apparition of Christ my brother it was the the opposite when you see then we're going to see in the book of Revelation the time will come you see who is behind opposing the book what else that's it nothing else well, I'm going to hand the word back to Pastor Jesus he's just very anxious there because time is running out right Pastor Jesus you're gonna give 10 minutes for for the church ask the question and live there and allow the brethren that they now know about revelation they're going to be able to answer, to answer everything Yes, my friend, now that it's easier to answer the question, I'm going to give you the questions. Therefore, there are a few that have been already answered. You already have the answer ready. Let's go to the first. Going back to the study of the Church of Asia, Asia that's a, here's the question. What was the action, reaction of the world, the flesh, and the enemy of all souls to the project of the gospel in the letter of Pergamon? to the letter of the church of Pergamon what was the reaction of the world the brand is going to be remaining a church with the Bible opens in Revelation chapter 2 from verse 12 and 17 and to this answer you're going to ad identify firstly the person of Trinity was the main target of the, the uh, reaction of the world and the period of Pergamon was this that I said yes Pergamon and then second place you need to answer what was the reaction against the Holy Spirit the first two have already been answered in the introductory word if you paid attention so let us see you have to find out what were the practices used by the world in order to oppose to the faith so here are the three parts of the question related to the text of Revelations chapter 2 from verse 12 to 17 we can give you um, about 10 minutes is this enough probably you may even be able to answer faster and then we'll come back to give you uh, a few um, a little more information about okay Amen. Let's. If you don't have uh, uh, the clue, there are people that are so smart with the story of WhatsApp. Quickly, you get your clue. Everything that comes from Brazil, and so the first question identified the first person of Trinity that was the main target of the reaction of the world and the period of Pergamos. 
Let's go. Who can answer? Spirit The Holy Spirit. Why the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's here to show the doctrine, to make us understand that Jesus exists and about the eternity, show everything that is happening to us. Anybody else want to um, supplement what she just said? Does anybody want to say anything else? So the brethren saw there that the enemy of our souls, it tries in every way it tried and continues to try to disrupt the project that God left for us. And we see in these letters, if you, if you analyze the, the history of the church, we'll see exactly that the prophecy already was showing this. The prophecy was already showing, would alerted us for the prophetic moment in which the church is living. Pastor G said there that in the church of Ephesus, what was the key word in Ephesus? What was the emphasis of the world upon the church? What was that? No. No. On the contrary. Yes, it was against the word and the doctrine. What, what was the action of the enemy against the church in order to prevent the doctrine? The opposition, right? Exactly. In the beginning of the church, the enemy uh, rose an opposition, a great opposition against the doctrine. We see that in Acts, in the beginning, that confusion, the moment in which the church spread out of the world and the church entered into history, showing that Jesus was alive. And Jesus was not dead. That was the beginning of the church, was the opposition against the word. Because the church didn't have any other way to spread the, the gospel in the, the way we have today. Today we have books, we have internet, we study, we watch videos. But there, in the beginning of the church, what was the tool that the church had in order to spread the gospel? It was the word. Is their mouth was a preaching, was proclaimed, Jesus is alive, see? Jesus died, but he is not there. Jesus resurrected. So the doctrine, the beginning, it was implemented in that way. The resource that they had was the word. And so uh, when a brother preached, 3,000 people were saved. One of the first preaching of Peter, 3,000 lives uh, became Christian, converted. So the opposition was in that way. The opposition uh, was against the doctrine. But in Smyrna, what was it? the death? In Smyrna, was, was uh, no. No, 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 I'm not. Am I speaking too much? It was about death. Why? Because the church was was sent to the fire pits in the rains in order to kill the doctrine, in order to silence the people. Exactly there. So the Father, the Word, was was in the church of Ephesus, and the Son, from, um, which was the body of Christ, killing the church. So now, if we go to John 16, John 16 speaks exactly about this. It says that the death, the world was going to kill the bread and the church will make you do a favor to the church. Why? Because the more the bread and died, the more the people was was killed there, the more the gospel was growing. People was becoming converts when they were, were watching people to be thrown on the arenas, to be killed by lions. People converted uh, because of the witness of the faith. But now in Pergamos, 
the action was against the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit generates why in man, what in man generates faith. So it's the Holy Spirit that has the task of generating in man the faith in Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't believe in Jesus. If without the Holy Spirit, you don't believe in the Word, you don't believe in God. Right. You have to discern exactly. The Holy Spirit is, does exactly that, gives you the, uh, this understanding. So, letter A is the Holy Spirit. Letter B is already answered. What was your reaction to the Holy Spirit? Is to, to destroy faith, is to attack the faith, to confuse people, in order to remove from you the faith that was generated by God. This is not the faith that we hear out there. Oh, I have faith, I will be. I will do well, I will grow up, I will do well uh, in life. No, that's not this kind of faith. It's not the faith that comes from God. This is, a, this is a human faith. You don't need this faith in order to do well. You just need to work, you just need to wake up early, you need to you know, uh, work hard, uh, leave the WhatsApp to, aside and work hard. No, no, you don't need to have faith. Oh, well, you need to have faith, but you sleep at home. You have faith that you will do well in life, but then you see him at 10 o'clock in the morning, where's the guy? Then you find a job for him and it doesn't work and it's not do well in life. Why? It's not faith that's going to lead men to any place. It's you. You have to be, uh, have the action. You need to want things. So the enemy, he acted attacked against faith in order to kill faith, in order to confuse, in order to take you away from the path, in order to take you away from the project of God. Now see which were the practices used by the world in order to oppose the faith. So let's go. Which were the practices of the world in order to oppose faith? No one? Exactly. False doctrines. To confuse the doctrine. What they said there. Uh, turn faith into something material. Make the word vulgar. Turn it into something common. Now everybody has a Bible. Nobody understands the Bible. They have the word of life. The Bible is the word of life. But in order for you to turn it into the living word you need to have the Holy Spirit so in order for you to live the word of life and having the living word you need to have the Holy Spirit you cannot allow the things of the world Christianity today or the gospel which is the self benefit you do not have you should not allow this thing to enter into your heart uh, ecumenism all the other things uh, you see there's a, a gold hammer that God's God is, is the judge is going to if you hit the hammer or the holy water a nail all these things they're cultural none of this is spiritual the enemy continues trying to confuse man's head man does anybody I also want to say something. This is materialism. This is terrible. Men, they, he exchanged what is eternal to the material things, the things of this life. And what is worse is that when you hear these things inside of the church and prosperity, if you, if you, if you want to be rich, it's a preaching that I speak. The uh, objective is one alone, is to fill the coffers of the church, the safes of the church. So let's go listen to the answer. Brother Brethren, we are here back to offer the Brethren a little contribution related to the answer to our questions. For sure, the Brethren had enough, enough time to give the answers, and we are going to just make a few comments to the Brethren. So let's go. So the first question is here. What was 
direction of the world against the flesh uh, of the flesh and of the enemy against the project of the letter of programmers so the direction of the world was this was in order to cancel faith and even to exteriorize faith and how was it done it was done through a union so the first action uh, against the first church of Ephesus was the action of the opposition the second was as we have seen in the last Sunday school was against death and the third is now again it was a union in order to destroy in order to transform to cancel transform in faith that had a, an interior characteristic which is the symbol of a, a Mosa seed to a faith that is exterior it was an exteriorization of the faith and the verse you, the brother can see here in verse 13 the expression of the Lord Jesus to the church you did not deny my faith you kept my name in the time and Antipas my faithful witness so here is this first answer so the answer of letter A and B surely the brethren found in an easy way because you paid attention to the explanation of the introductory word so here it is to identify the church of the person of Trinity which was the main target of the action of the world in the period of Pergamos. So here it is, the person of the Trinity was the erection was against the Holy Spirit. As the brethren have seen the previous uh, studies, the first reaction was against the Father, the Word, the doctrine in Ephesus, and then the second reaction against the Son, the body of the church in the period of Smyrna, and now in Pergamos is a third reaction against the Holy Spirit, representing there the faith in the Spirit. That's why the answer to letter B, when they asked what was the reaction, why the reaction was against the Holy Spirit, why was the reaction against the Holy Spirit? Because faith is manifested in the New Testament by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Without the presence of the Holy Spirit, there is no faith. That's why when you see the answer, you see the answer to the question here. The question is the reaction against the faith. And the faith in the New Testament is the presence of the Holy Spirit. So there is only faith when the Holy Spirit reveals Himself, the real Holy Spirit manifests. That's what we see here, the answer to letter B. So then let us see, the brethren will see here, what were the practices used by the world to oppose the faith. Your brethren remember that in Ephesus, the practices were through one word. What was the word? The word opposition. We've seen in other Sunday schools, and then we've seen in Smyrna, other word that define the opposition or the weapons used to oppose to the church, which was exactly the words of persecution, poverty, and death. So death, the word death, opposition, Ephesus, and Smyrna, death. So now, in Pergamos, we we'll see exactly the word union because union. We do in what way? It was through a moment in which the faith, which was real, was interior in the structure of a, a mustard seed, now is going to exteriorize and transform into a, a material faith. So, what was spiritual now becomes material. So, in how how is it going to happen? It's through the doctrine of Balaam, which was idolatrous, and the doctrine of the Nicolaites, which was the flesh. The flesh, the idolatry, transforming faith now into something materialized. So, therefore, that was the great practice used by the world, the flesh, and the enemy of our souls to oppose to faith in the spirit here of Pergamos. And I would like now, after this explanation, to ask Pastor Jerichi if he has any complementary um, observations to make. Pastor did do you have anything else to say? No, no, I think this is perfect, especially this, this comment that you made here, because this uh, material idolatry, the doctrine of Balaam was this, was this. What did he want? He wanted to prophesize a lie. Why? Because in truth, he had, as a prophet, he had to say what God was saying. And Balaam, began to say what he thought he 
he should say in order to earn money he was using it in order to earn money he stopped being a prophet of the spirit and became a prophet corrupt so his situation was so terrible just you can't remain here i need you you know what Jesus because um, I'm calm and you are uh, too excited so the doctrine of Balaam it was this is to earn money with whatever he did he preached he was a prophet and the resource came from the part of the Lord in such a way that he it was a, the donk that was riding on spoke since he he didn't speak, down, the, then the dog spoke. But um, you heard me. So I've seen the rooster sing. Uh, uh, there are many people that didn't hear the, the rooster cock. They, there are people that didn't hear. Because now it's chickens. Now it's in the, the pan. So here, there is another case in which there is a word which is onomatopoeia onomatopoeia which is the donkey speaking it was necessary to donkey to speak with the prophet and so that's how idiotic was the prophet so he stopped, when he stopped uh, delivering the revelation he began doing what was in on his own head and he was too greedy it was the doctrine of the Nicolaites he already speak of about this doctrine before so now what was here there there's a lot of things here in the book and the letter the word Pergamos come from two words Pergamos per perverted gamos marriage everybody knows which was a perverted marriage when the church united to the state so the church stopped being a church of Christ to then become an imperial church. Then it was over. And then don't the church became the Roman church instead of being Christian. Now it became a Roman church with the name of Roman. You receive many other things. We're not complaining about anybody. We're not criticizing anybody. When we speak about Christianity, it was left behind. We received all the benefits, the benefits and also um, the bad things as well it happens in every phase you think that the roman church is responsible for everything that is out there this is this is wrong because there are a lot of protestant church that have done many of the wrong things and people there have been baptized uh, with the holy spirit now is bringing idolatry into our midst it's this is terrible so let us close how many minutes do we have we just have one minute in order for you in your church the man now they have the chance to speak for three minutes the messengers uh, for the night which which are they which are the message that the brethren have a faithful doctrine repentance the arrival of the lord which is near the manna the new name want more than that you need a year only to preach about all of these things. So at night you're going to come up with s some other things. Um, the woman with the flow of blood. Uh, there's nothing to do with this. I know that people like to preach about this. But Brad, we're going to have time for what is of the Holy Spirit. Or we will change the work of the Holy Spirit. We now have this responsibility. You need to follow or you end up following the path of the Gentiles. My brother, we are not going to have meeting of the um, the women this Wednesday this coming Wednesday we are not going to have women's uh, meeting we're going to continue here God bless you pray for us peace of the Lord who are in the haste go slowly because there is a carnival in Brazil uh, who is who is playing carnival it's those are the last days of Pompeii peace of the Lord going to sing 
the single leg. What song? What? I'm the same. Bless the name of the Lord. Now we're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. We we'll praise you for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Has opened up our spiritual eyes. That's why I want to praise the Lord. Because your grace this morning has been able to reach us once again. Lord, we praise you because we're privileged people, because we are we are your beloved church, wash, redeem the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we praise you for so great love, because we're nothing, we don't deserve anything. It's your grace, Lord, it's your mercy, Lord, that prevent us from being consumed, Lord. We don't have anything to offer you, Lord. That's why we thank you, Lord. We praise you because you're holy we're perfect Lord you're a perfect God you are God that is the God I am of our lives that's why I praise the Lord for this morning in your presence Lord we praise the Lord for your presence in this place we praise the Lord for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen now I'm going to pray for the children in the ministry and the lesson I'm going to ask one of the deacons to pray. Lord Father, in this moment we we'll, uh, lay our hands up upon the children, following an unnutrition of the Spirit, asking that your hand be laid upon them and give them the grace, the anointing, to preserve them, the health, the intelligence, and the experience that come from your Holy Spirit to strengthen in your presence, children, intermediate and adolescents. Give them grace, give them strength. Teach us, Lord, to walk in your path, Lord. It's teach them to um, respect your teachings, Lord. Help, Lord, uh, uh, the work of your the teachers to generate salvation uh, in the school with their uh, schoolmates. Lord, the fruit of all uh, bless us with the work of the Holy Spirit and now families as well. We praise you for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, receive our service, our adoration to your name, that we may have a day that is blessed in your presence. Deliver us, Lord, from any attack of the enemy. Preserve us our faith, Lord. Those are going to live to visit, Lord. Lay your hands upon them, giving grace and a revealed word and the invitation they're going to be made this afternoon. May have an answer, Lord, that you may honor. And that and during the service tonight we may see salvation in this place. Operate in our behalf is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say, Lord, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit, 
be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We're praying, or as the brethren, for to pray for the marriage of Guilherme and Samila. It's going to be happening Friday at eight o'clock tonight. Uh, at night, the whole church is invited. The service is going to be on the church of Hollandale at eight o'clock. Exactly, without the bride or with the bride, eight o'clock. We're going to start the service. The service is in glorification of the Lord for the marriage of the the brethren. So you. Be ready. Give the proper uh, time. From here to there is about 50 minutes. We're going to have Breton there, coordinating where you can park. So the Breton, we're not going to have any problem in entering in the church and having place to sit. But parking there is a little difficult. So the Breton go as soon as possible so you don't have problems to park too far from the church and i say the uh, wish the peace of the lord to uh, the whole church